order. You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man. A leading bishop in the Church of England has tonight come out as another victim in the violent abuse scandal that has rocked the church. He's the most senior figure in the church to come forward and the first bishop to do so. It follows a six-month investigation by this program into the abuse scandal, which led the Archbishop of Canterbury to admit the church had failed the victims terribly. Tonight, some of those victims have written to the Archbishop, asking him to reflect on how the church handled those allegations and whether he did enough. Meanwhile, John Smythe, who's accused of the abuse, in, is back home in South Africa. From there, Cathy Newman has this report. Mr Smythe, Mr Smythe, Cathy Newman from Channel 4 News. Uh, we're told that you beat young men until they bled. Why did you do that? I'm not talking about that. What did you do? Last week, Channel 4 News broadcast graphic allegations of abuse carried out by John Smythe, barrister, evangelical Christian and former colleague of the Archbishop of Canterbury. I don't I'm not talking about this. I'm sorry, it's... Uh, don't the victims deserve to hear why you did it? How did you know I was here? Today, the Bishop of Guildford, Andrew Watson, identified himself as one of Smythe's alleged victims issuing an astonishingly frank statement. I am one of the survivors of John Smythe's appalling activities in the late 1970s and early 80s. I'm also one of the bishops in the Church of England. This has placed me in a unique and challenging position when it comes to the events of the past few days. My own story is certainly less traumatic than that of some others. I was drawn into the Smythe circle as they were, and the beating I endured in the infamous garden shed was violent, excruciating and shocking. But it was thankfully a one-off experience, never to be repeated. John Smythe was chairman of a Christian charity called the Ewan Trust, which organised holiday camps for public school children. He's accused of violently abusing a group of boys from the public school Winchester College in a shed at his home nearby. The alleged abuse came to light in 1982, but was never reported to the police at the time. For decades, the victims say they've suffered in silence. He made me strip off my clothes and he got out a cane and started to beat me. What did he say to you? I think it was along the lines of this, this is the discipline that God likes. This is uh, what's going to help you to become holy. The Archbishop of Canterbury last week apologised to the alleged victims and said the church had failed terribly. I obviously didn't know that he was um, abusing people in any way at all. Tonight, the Bishop of Guildford expressed his gratitude to Justin Welby for that apology and said that he didn't believe the Archbishop knew anything of Smythe's alleged violent activities until his office was informed in 2013. It was abuse perpetrated by a misguided, manipulative and dangerous man and tragically playing on the longing of his young victims that they might live godly lives. The bishop has spoken with Hampshire police over the weekend. Their investigations continue. After senior figures in the church failed to report the allegations of violent abuse to the police more than three decades ago, John Smythe was free to start a new life first in Zimbabwe, where he faced more horrific claims, and then here in South Africa. With his reputation in ruins in the UK, he and his wife are, we're told, hunkered down at their home in Cape Town. Now, though, the men who say he abused them, the church, and even his own children are urging him to give himself up. Cathy Newman, Channel 4 News, in Johannesburg. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to the Church of England priest and broadcaster, Giles Fraser, who's written of his experience of suffering beatings at his public school in the 1970s. I asked him what happened to him as a child. Um, well, I was beaten at prep school in a way that was very reminiscent of, of these beatings from John Smythe um, from when I was seven all the way through to 12. So we were beaten with all sorts of implements, from canes to bats to... Um, anything that came to hand. Sometimes it was just a sort of immediate thing. Sometimes you'd have to wait for a very long period of time. We'd wait outside the chapel, a very gloomy, 
creepy chapel. Chapel um, was germane to it. The chapel, ch chapel, chapel was germane to it. So, uh, and I think uh, it's not right just to say that uh, these beatings are the result of a few bad eggs, bad apples. Um, I think there is a theological aspect to it, and I think it goes back to a, a rather poisonous brew between evangelical Christianity, mm. public school religion, and the empire. It's about making you tough enough to rule the world. I mean, this is, this is what they were trying to do. This was the job of the public schools. The headmaster who beat me was um, military police in Burma. That's what he did before he became a schoolmaster. That apparently was good preparation for being a schoolmaster. Um, you know, th there was, there's also this thing about, oh, you mustn't tell, you mustn't be sneaks, or that somehow you're being, you're, you're being wimpy about it. It's not. It's very important that people start to tell mm. about that culture of abuse. But because now, it, it was a culture <clears throat> of abuse, John. But now a bishop, the Bishop of Guildford, has surfaced. Probably there are others, too. There'll be loads of people. I mean, lo loads of people. I mean, but, I... But, I, but I, what, what do you see in what the Bishop of Guildford has said? Well, I'm very glad that he's spoken. I'm very glad that he's, uh, he's spoken so personally about it. I disagree with some aspects of his statement. One of the things that he said is that this is not a question of theology. Uh, this is just a question of sort of a bad man. And this is, the, this is the thing that we need to face. Actually, mm. it is a question of theology. There is some bad theology at the, at the heart of uh, these whippings. What does that and, theology uh, say? That theology says uh, that mm. uh, you need to be a real man. Um, you can be whipped for Jesus um, in order to make you strong. Uh, you know, the, the Victorians are obsessed with homosexuality and masturbation, and it's a similar sort of obsession you get. I mean, the Church of England's still stupidly obsessed with homosexuality, and that's part of the psychodynamic, complicated psycho psychodynamic that was going on then in English public schools. But then, <clears throat> what about the past? This is the past. Yes. Could we not say it's over? Um, Yes, you could say it's over, but there is a Although problem... Although not for the survivors, of no, course. No, it's not. And, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm still... I, I still bear the mental scars. I mean, you know, long after the pain goes, it shapes you. I mean, I'm still angry about it. Um, over 40 years afterwards, I'm still angry about it. Um, and, you know, it, it, it shapes the way I look at the world. So, no, it's not... It's not um, ancient history. And private education, public schools, I mean, surely it's over there. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it is over there. I mean, the interesting thing, it was banned in this country in 1999 in schools. It was banned for adults. Beating. It beat it, beating. Corporal punishment was banned for adults in 1947 or 8. You couldn't do it to adults then. All the way through to 1999, you could do it to children. What does that say about our mentality? This is obvious a uh, watershed for, for, the, for the church. The, what more has to be done? There is much more that the church has to do. And the church has to stop saying this was about a few bad apples, that classic defence. It has to take a very good long look in the mirror and say, actually, it was something about the way in which we presented the Christian faith that made this possible. And they have to do a... There has to be a sort of theological reckoning. And I think that people are incredibly resistant to doing that. And how can they make amends? I mean... I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I think some of the, the damage will always be done. I mean, Christianity is, at its heart, a religion of love and forgiveness. And, you know, for me, love and forgiveness is what's going to get us through this. But actually, the scars, and the scars for people like me, and the anger run so deep. I'm not always sure, and I know I should, but I'm not sure how to forgive in these situations, in this circumstance. That's an incredible challenge, because uh, you, as a vicar... Absolutely. ..are having to preach it, forgiveness. And, and I think it's a terrible thing to say, and I think it's right. I think I am a lesser person for not being able to do it, or not knowing how to do it. And I think that forgiveness is absolutely at the heart of the Christian gospel and the faith. I am a lesser person for not knowing how to do it in these circumstances. Charles Fraser, thank you very much for talking to us.